Hi, welcome back to the Chaotic Sofa where we choose creat creativity over perfection and enjoy the process. Just wanted to introduce today's uh, um, What's in the Bag Lush Haul video. Uh, preface it by saying I noticed that I had something on my nose during uh, the video after I smelled one of the bath bombs and I got something on my nose. Um, so uh, yeah, the rest of the video, I have black on my nose and over my lip and then I went right ahead and I filmed my little um, book haul video uh, right after, still is something on my nose. So uh, joys of being nearsighted, I couldn't tell there was anything on my nose. Anyway, I thought I'd catch on the flip side and just give you a heads up about that today. If you're like me and the, those kind of things bother you, uh, no, I don't think I wiped my face and uh, no, I don't think I noticed I had something on my nose. Just thought I'd, you know, touch base with you now that I'm looking perfect and have nothing on my nose at all. Okay, see you soon. <laughs> Ooh, that smells actually, smells a bit weird, but it might be the smell of everything at once. Ooh, it's overpowering. <laughs> Definitely biodegradable. Not sure I'm excited about them, but they're potato starch. <laughs> Well, it's the next day. I kind of told myself I'll get a shower and uh, get freshened up, clean up my kitchen, and then I'll make my video. And I got up and I thought, I don't want to do any of that stuff. I just want to put some, brush my hair and put some cream on my face. I put on some of my homemade lip balm too. It's bubblegum flavor, I think. I like it. Got to make some more lip balm sometime. Forgot I knew how to do that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I think I'll just sit down with you and, uh, you know, just hang out for a little while and show you, um, uh, my Lush haul, the promised Lush haul, but also maybe share a couple other things about what's going on. And, um, I've got my pile of reads, my, uh, most recent book I finished, the book I'm reading now, and the next two books I plan to read. Got them all here. Thought I'd maybe share share that too. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's what we'll do today. Um, get yourself a, a hot drink or a little snack, something to munch on. I've got myself in my Grundy Lake Provin Provincial Park mug with the moose inside and I've got a lovely cup of coffee and it's Bridgehead Coffee. Uh, Bridgehead is a company here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada um, um, that make coffee and it's my favorite kind of coffee. Uh, and yeah, I have a, my fridge actually has a place to put a Keurig in the front of the fridge. So I don't have to have the coffee maker out anymore, which is great because as you may know, if you follow the channel, my house is a mess and I'm terrible at keeping my space organized. So one less thing on the counter ever. Um, and uh, it makes a nice hot cup of coffee on demand. And the little pods that I buy from Bridgehead that you put in it actually go in my compost bag. So um, that's terrific. And now this is like my favorite place to have coffee is at home <laughs> with, uh, you know, with the lactose free cream that I like and with uh, honey and uh, yeah, just made to order. Right. Perfect. It is a little it could be a little hotter, but, you know, other things. Anyhow, I'm going to take these glasses off because uh, I don't need them to see you this close. And I notice I'm getting a lot of glare. This is still a really temporary setup for me. I'm still um, wrapping my mind around reorganizing my house, balancing that with my new job. Um, and 
you know, uh, my two growing teens and constant idea-itis that I suffer from <laughs> that uh, makes me clean up one mess and then start another immediately. Um, but this little corner is a, a nice little corner for filming and I do have some um, lights that I can use to, it's actually quite bright for me if I look over there. Um, it is an overcast day here, but I think the there's glare from my lights. So I'm learning. I'm still learning how to do this, how to do videos, still trying to decide if I want to do this. I have my stand um, for my phone because I make my videos on my phone. Bought a lovely stand for my phone um, so I could make videos, so I could angle it down and look in the soap when I was making it, look down at the soap. Um, and uh, one day my daughter knocked the stand. I had it placed on my counter just in a very random bad spot my daughter decided that in her wisdom that she needed to climb onto the counter instead of using the stepping stool in the kitchen to get a glass or something off of a high shelf a bowl I don't know anyhow she knocked the stand on the floor and managed to break what I thought was a really indestructible heavy duty stand that I bought on Amazon um, but now I've got it stuck in a plant pot and it's kind of sort of working in a plant pot um, and at least it looks a little bit more natural when it's standing around in my home when I'm not using it and takes up a little less space because now it's uh, roommates with a with a beautiful uh, mother-in-law's tongue snake plant <laughs> that I just repotted and brought in from my garden. I think I was outside with you the, guy, the day that I uh, was repotting everything, bringing everything inside from my garden. Um, I keep all container plants like tropicals out on my uh, covered porch in the spring and summer. Um, and then in the fall, I bring them in. This was their second year going outside and I looked to bring them in and everything was so huge. I was like, I need to divide my tropicals. So I think my one spider plant became four spider plants. Uh, what else did I divide? I had a couple of like little trees like Dracaena and different things in a pot together and I had to separate them into separate pots and I brought in a huge basil plant that I still don't know really where that's going. If I'm going to dry some basil or cook with some fresh basil before it's too late, I do not know how well the basil plant will survive indoors. Anyway, uh, one of my many interests, right? I'm interested in my garden, interested in my plants and of course being interested in plants does dovetail nicely with being interested in formulation and being interested in formulation does dovetail nicely with shopping at Lush. So let's get into it. This is, um, so, uh, a couple of weeks back I shared, um, that I'd gone to Lush just to get my shampoo and conditioner and that I'd ended up buying a few bath bombs and it was a bit of a spurge, splurge for me, spurge. It was a spurge for me. Um, anyhow, after that splurge, um, I started watching videos of other people's Lush hauls and then that, then I got, oh, I got the I wants and there were lots of things that I wanted from the Halloween and Christmas collections. Um, I have to say mostly the Halloween and I guess uh, probably Christmas isn't fully available in the stores or maybe it's just that Christmas doesn't grab me as much as the Halloween stuff. They really have some neat stuff for Halloween. So I ordered a bunch of things. I did not get everything I wanted. But still, it was another splurge after a splurge. Um, this time, I ordered online and I used, I think it's Afterpay that they have available at Lush, which is great. Um, with after, and not in no way sponsored by me, but with Afterpay, um, you can divide your purchase in four payments that are every two weeks. So instead of paying for your purchase all at once, you put it on your credit card over the course of a month. So that lets you line up paying for your treat a little bit each payday. Um, and so I did that and got myself, like I said, some things, not everything, and ordered it uh, by ground shipping, which is two to eight days, I think. Um, and it came yesterday. Uh, so yeah, so I've got everything out now. Put away the packing peanuts, only ate a few. <laughs> they tasted like bath bombs, it wasn't good. Uh, oh, and with the afterpay, one more thing about the afterpay, they don't charge any interest for that. I guess they make their money from the retailers that they're offering that service to, because it certainly does um, make it easier to decide to buy something 
when you see you can manage your um you can manage paying for it like that so i, I like that now and i i actually look for it on things uh, partly because it's uh, advantageous, but also partly because I'm just kind of maxed out and I, I, you know, I know if I want to buy something and it's going to be three or four hundred dollars, I'm juggling the cards around and wondering even where I have that kind of money right now. So, <laughs> so this is good because, you know, you can afford twenty dollars or fifty dollars or however much a quarter of it is. And then, uh, you know, put it in your calendar that you're going to be paying every two weeks. And they do send you a little heads up before just so if you do have to move money around or something to pay it. Um, that's, yeah, it's great. I, 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 I do like that. And uh, I think as a business, I think that's an advantage when you have um, payment options like that on your platform. Uh, it's definitely going to keep people coming back and people deciding um, that they that they can afford to shop with you because they know how they're going to manage it. Um, yeah. Okay. So I ordered a few things. I got my uh, paper here so I can look what everything I ordered is and get the names right today. I can look at the ingredients and I might put some boxes here um, where it says online um, how to use this or what it smells like or whatever, just in case I'm not 100% accurate. So the first thing I was really tempted by after watching a few other uh, YouTubers Lush Hauls um, was the Toil and Trouble Scrub. I haven't actually opened this yet. I did open some of the things and you can see I haven't opened this and I haven't cleaned it from the way that it was packaged because it was in with all those biodegradable packing peanuts and some of the bath bombs like this one, it wasn't in a bag or anything, it was just placed in there. This one was just placed in there. So there was kind of dust and scent like all throughout the package. So I think the, some of the dusties on this, I think, are from my, my ghost bath bomb. Um, tap, tap here on my table, just so it's not as gross when I open it. So this is Toil and Troubles Shower Scrub. Uh, it's a purpley scrub, you can see from here. And you may be able to see or may not be able to see. Oh, I can't see them. I'm going to get my hands all messy when I look inside, but there are supposed to be some sort of gel, jelly soap kind of bats in here, um, which is really fun. Um, but also, as I mentioned previously, I'm shedding like crazy right now and um, scrubs are good. Scrubs are my friend. So I wanted a couple of scrubs. I did have the cup of coffee one, but since I've been getting up so early, I don't always like I, I'll often take a bath in the evening and then I you know if I'm getting up at 3 a.m. and have to be somewhere by 4 a.m. Um, I don't want to get a shower in the morning I don't want to get up earlier for that so a cup of coffee when you're winding down for bed is not you know it's not um, it's not the best ambiance for that uh, product so I got so I got a couple more scrubs one of them is this toil and trouble which it says uh, an herbal concoction for bewitchingly soft skin and I'm just looking to see if it says what the scent is. I'm not even looking on the right page of my receipt. That's how much stuff I got. You know what? Oh yeah, no, it's here. Um, so there seems to be lavender, peppermint. It looks like there's sage. Um... They do these ingredients in a, may, I'm not sure if this order is from the ingredient that there's the most of down to the ingredients that they're least. It probably is, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't have, it doesn't seem to be in any particular order. The lavender's fairly high up there in this ingredient list, and that might be right. Um, I just know. Yeah, maybe got kind of one of those lush smells that doesn't it doesn't strongly smell like any particular essential oil to me and it could smell like I found like my whole package kind of smelled like this and like these that were just placed in there so hold on I'm clearing hmm. yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure what this smells like maybe I'm a little congested but um I it feels like a sugar strip scrub I think that's going to be nice. It'll be a soft scrub that leaves your skin sort of soft. Um, sugars really, they leave something on the skin like they, they're not really abrasive and then washing away clean. It's because it's almost like it's dissolving on you, you know. 
Um, and there are well, really gunked up. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that that's a bat. He's covered in sugar scrub, but I believe if I wash it off, it's a black bat, like of a jelly soap type consistency. I think this will be fun to get a shower with. I'm not crazy in love with the smell. To me, I'm getting a little bit of glueiness or something in there. It's not my favorite smell ever. I do like the feel. And honestly, it's 250 grams. Uh, I'm probably going to use it all over my entire body. So I'm not going to have it forever, right? It'll be a few times and it'll be gone. It says it's best used by October 23rd next year. Uh, but then it says, actually, it says used by October 23rd next year, best used, fresh. So I'm going to try to abide by that and not start 2023 still having this anyway. Get it all used up. Just, uh, I did bring up, yes. Ha ha. I was thinking. Maybe I need a little spray. You can hear the sugar hitting my paperwork here. It's sugary. A little bit of my favorite cleaning spray. Uh, an environmentally friendly one. Oh, I, this smell I love. That's funny. I love the smell of that. That's a basil cleanser. I love the smell of that more than the scrub. Oh, well. Um, I do love you, Lush. It's not all the smells are a home run for me. Uh, so, uh, since we're doing scrubs, uh, I did get another scrub. And I think I'll, this one I'll use second because uh, definitely less seasonal. And does it say it has to be used fresh? It does say best used fresh. But this one, it's just the orange scrub. They do have a blood orange scrub. Um, I didn't choose that. This one is just orange shower scrub. It says add a little sunshine to your day with this citrusy sea salt butter. Oh, sorry. Buffer. Buffer. I was going to say it's not a butter. It's a buffer. So you can buff your skin. Um, and I'm looking at the ingredients for the scent. I see there's a lot of orangey. There's also tangerine, bergamot. Uh, yeah, so just, a you know, a, a citrusy. There's sea salt in it, and definitely that has a smell that I love. So this one I love the smell of. It's just orange, like citrusy, really orangey. Mm. Looks like it's going to be a invigorating one to use. I love orangey scents. So, and again, it's very soft. Um, this one I should find a little bit more, I think, exfoliating because it's sea salt and it's not just dissolving at room temperature on my fingers. That's going to have to be rinsed off. So that one might be a little bit more hearty of a scrub. And I love the smell. And the first time I opened it, I was like, oh, that's intense. And I love it. Um, so I got that one. Um, that was it for scrubs. I did have this idea and I will show you on the day that I put them together. So my kids are 12 and 14. They love, love, love Halloween. When they were kids, I used to dress uh, the whole house, you know, for Halloween inside and out. Um, I was a music teacher for years and I taught at a, a co-op and I had my own office. My office had no windows, so I sort of treated it like a black box theater. So I had, I mean, I had the lighting, the black light, the strobe lighting, the whatever every corner had, you know, something. And I did up my whole little room for Halloween and my kids, I call them my students, they used to get just a bang out of it. You know, it was, it was great. And, um. As they got older and I got older and things changed in my life, I wasn't doing that so much. But I, I still have some of the things I haven't gotten rid of yet. And many, many, many happy memories of my years doing that. Anyhow, but my kids were never as keen on the getting ready and going out trick-or-treating part. They liked seeing what people had done. If somebody had a graveyard in their front yard or a crime scene or, you know, the, they wanted to check out everyone's lights and decorations. Um... Uh, I think they did like getting dressed up, but also I, I think they're a little like me and they more liked the decorating the home and were, you know, I'd rather be a puppeteer, right? I'd hide under and I'd stick up something cool. Um, I don't look at my, I'm trying to learn to look at myself as a canvas. In fact, I'd like to learn to do makeup this year and be less reticent to be seen with a full face and be the puppet. Um, 
So yeah, so anyhow, that's a really long way of saying they're not really going out that much anymore, but I wanted to make them some cool little Halloween treat. Um, so I'm putting together a bag for each of them with some things. And, and one of the things I decided to include from Lush was the tarantula shower jelly. I'm going to open one and we're going to look. I think this one was kind of leaking because I put it down somewhere overnight and there was like a ring after. I did have to take it to the sink and wash it when I got it. Very sticky. So I might have to pause after this and go wash up. But I'm going to be brave. I'm not going to pour it out in case there's loose stuff. I'm going to try to pull it out. Hopefully it doesn't break. I have seen them from other YouTubers and they seem to be fairly dear. Oh my God, it's huge. Oh. <laughs> it's a, oh my Lord. I could say something gross that that reminds me of, but I won't be gross. It's a family channel, but there may be women out there who can relate to seeing something like this in the shower in a less positive context. Um, yeah. So this Huge clump of stuff is a tarantula shower jelly. My kids are each getting one. I hope they like them. I'm not sure what Sydney's going to think of this scent. Not totally positive what Luna's going to think of it either, but I think Luna, I, I think Luna will like it. it. I love it. It's an intense cherry scent. I really like it. It's strong like, I don't know, I want to say black cherry or Mm hmm I really like it. So um, I'm fingers crossed Sydney doesn't really like hers and she just opens it and then she puts it in the bathroom that we share. <laughs> Luna has his own. <laughs> Luna lives on the first floor and we live on the second. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll get to try it in the shower too. Oh, it smells good. I am looking forward to trying this. I'm looking forward to seeing what the kids think of that. So yeah, how gross am I? The good thing is, I just have to rinse my hands. I've already got the soap. So yeah, I did get two of those and I'm gonna go rinse my hands. Back in a sec. I'm back. Mm, my hands smell nice and fresh. I think uh, I think that's one product I think I actually, I think I'd rather have that than the toil and trouble. So if you're shopping, Although I did look on the website shortly after I'd made this order and there was part of me that was really glad I made the order because it looked like almost everything was sold out online here in Canada all of a sudden, like it was very, you know, from one day to the next almost. So also the store that I shop at here in Ottawa at the Saint Laurent Shopping Centre is almost bare all the time and I don't know what's with that but I've never been in there where it looked like they had actually didn't even look like they had furniture everywhere so they didn't even have the display display space they had like a lot of negative space I would say like empty space in the which I find weird because it must be expensive to rent at that big shopping center uh, a store um, but anyhow they they weren't fully stocked like it just seems like there's not that much stuff in there um, and considering that they don't have that much furniture and then the furniture doesn't look like it's overflowing with goodies that you could pick up. Um, I, I don't know if they're having supply chain issues and that's the reason they don't have more store furniture. Because if they had more store furniture and that's all the product that they can have out, it would just look worse, right? Um, anyhow, uh, yes. Yeah, so if you can get it, I would just go and live in Canada. I would probably just go in and get it. Now, having said that, I usually avoid the Rideau Center store, which might be a much better place to go here in Ottawa. I just don't like um, having to find parking to go to the Rideau Center. Um, I would probably park under City Hall and then walk over to the Rideau Center. So you don't want to have a lot of heavy stuff if you're planning to be, um, you know, doing a walk about the city <laughs> with your things. I guess you wear... You know, you wear your good walking shoes and uh, take a backpack, maybe. Yeah, and don't plan to get your whole haul. Um, but I might have to check it out. I might have to check it out. Anyhow, so yeah, that's, those are the scrubs and the shower jellies. I did get... Um, so this was last time I wanted my shampoo and my conditioner. Um, and it was mostly about that. And I picked up some bath bombs. This time I wanted those things. And uh, again, I, I got tempted and picked up some bath bombs. I also wanted some ba uh, bubble bars, um, which I did get. 
And uh, I also got tempted. Furthermore, I got tempted and I picked up a couple of soaps that I thought I'd really like to try. Um, the soaps are really a decadent treat for me because if I walk you around this corner and turn you towards the wall, um, there's a huge rack that's also that's made here. And some of it is very, very, very good, um, which leads me to another another tangent let's let's have another tangent so um and this is as a maker just this isn't like to praise myself this is maybe something like in my headspace or psychological and maybe as a creative person especially if you're kind of a blocked creative person maybe you've noticed this too because uh by the way i did say i wanted to talk about creativity more on my channel and i mentioned creativity right in my tagline so let's talk about creativity for a minute so if you make something and right after you make it and you're testing it or whatever, it's cured, but you know, in your head, it's just like you just made it and you, you're trying it and you go, yeah, I don't like the lather or the colors could be better or blah, blah, blah. Oh, my skin is soft, whatever. But you know, people are going to criticize it. I'm not going to tell anybody I make soap. It's really not that good or whatever. And then you don't think about it for a while. You're using different ones because I have a thousand of them in my bath bomb. You take in my bathroom. You take my in my bath bomb. I have a lot of soap in my bathroom. Um, so you take it out a while later and you try it and you go, oh yeah, the ladder the lather's actually pretty good and that's cured more now. Maybe it's because it had a lot of olive oil, it needed a longer cure, and you know, and the, but you still don't think that much of it. You just think yeah, your soap is pretty good. Um, and then you don't think about it again for a while. And then somebody gives you something that they've been praising and people have been hyping and everybody bought it. And you try it and you go, oh yeah, that's nice. I don't like that one as much as this one. And you take out your soap and you use it. And that might be the moment that you clue in that actually you're not doing that bad, Chicky Poo. Like you're making some good things. But maybe sometimes when you're too close to something, you don't have the perspective. So I was noticing that I'm doing that a lot and I didn't really think I was that critical, but I'll make a video and I'll put out the video and I'll go, that is hot garbage and no wonder it doesn't have that many views or no wonder it only has two likes or my channel will never get big because I ramble. Uh, my kids keep telling me nobody likes long videos anymore. Blah, 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 blah. And then guess what? Um, you watch it. Uh, maybe I've been really busy for three months. I haven't hardly thought about YouTube. So I got it. I, I one day was watching. I watched the video I just uploaded because I like to watch them and sort of, you know, ruminate on it or whatever after it goes up. I want to see what how it might seem to other people. I'm sure everybody who uh, is a content creator does that whether they admit it or not, I would say at least 80% of them do. There's probably some subgroup that never wants to see it again and hates their voice and all this stuff. But, um, yeah, you, I mean, I and I think that's reasonable because you don't grow through, if you don't look at your old performances and critique yourself, then how are you growing? You know, um, you need a teacher or something to tell you, but then even then, if you don't look at it yourself, <laughs> like the student who once said, we should listen while we're playing. It's like, yeah, you need to learn to listen at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, you know, I think, I think evaluating the things that you do yourself as a creator is, is very valuable. So then I started watching videos that I'd made months before and thought they were too long and they were hot garbage or whatever. And some of them weren't that bad. They were edited well. They hung together nice. It kind of had a narrative. I found it watchable um, and that was with the perspective of time and a little bit of distance and separating it from being it, it me, you know, kind of th that, that kind of thing where you're like it me, it no good. Um, so I think, uh, I think as creators, maybe um, giving yourself some time before you edit something um, and giving yourself some grace uh, can help with your creativity because we do say a lot of things to ourselves like this whole like hot garbage thing and like it's no good or no wonder it's not doing well or you know um, um nobody will be interested to hear what i what i'm saying for 45 minutes you know that kind of thing um and maybe you know maybe that's true maybe it's not but maybe you should put it in a drawer for three months or six months or a year 
and then pull it out and see what you think. Um, because when you have that distance, I think that that really helps. Anyway, that's all I want to say about that. It's just a tangent, but I, I was noticing it in various things that I do. So I thought maybe it was like the theme of my week. <laughs> so I'm sharing that theme. Um, back to my Lush haul. So I got some back bones. I got this one, which is stinking up my whole package, I have to say. It's called Ghosty. I got it because apparently there's beautiful rainbows of color that come out from the inside. I am looking to see what it's scented with. It says lemon and lime I'm seeing here. Um, again, it has this kind of, it has a fruit punchy scent. You know, um, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's probably a famous Lush scent. And I'm sorry I'm not enough of a Lush lifer to, to be able to tell you the name of the scent. Um, I think I'll, I'll enjoy it. It'll be refreshy. Do I love it? Not sure if I love it. Time will tell. Anyhow, um, this one may have to stay in the bag in case I need one for a birthday gift or something. Anyhow, I might not even get to use it myself. Um, I wish they'd kept it in a bag and it had arrived in better condition because it's a bit scuffed up and pockmarked. And I'm sure that was some sort of packaging oversight because everything else is bad um and if you're going to make cheesies out of your potato starch um packing peanuts and they're actually covered in bath bomby stuff you really can't so they're kind of ruined for that kind of reuse which i think is a fun reuse of them anyhow so i got a few others oh this is a i'm going to have a separate section on bubble bars in a sec I got a couple of bath bombs, well, actually I got five, a couple. Um, I got two of these, cause, okay, to me that's a little bit, I don't know if it's black, but I'm like reading like a little bit as licorice-y. Um, this one is called Bat Art, which I think is really funny because people make these bath art videos and uh, it's a little play on words there. So um, it's shimmery and pretty. Ooh. Um, the scent is, yeah, the scent, it says bitter cherry, lime I see in here, bitter almond. Yeah, I once made a soap that, um, I followed a recipe in a book and it said to mix all these essential oils and there were like about five of them. And when I mixed it all together and made the soap exactly like licorice, I'd made a licorice soap. Like, and they must know, right, when they're telling you, here's the ratios of these five essential oils. They must know that it comes out smelling like licorice. Um, it was neat. I don't think it was very popular, the licorice scented soap. This is a bit licorice-y. So these, these uh, bitter cherry, lime, and bitter almond, maybe they're on the list. And there might be other things here that are just written um, because they write them with a the kind of botanical or chemical name like INCI um, naming that you're supposed to do here in Canada. And uh, they don't all have in brackets uh, the common name. So there may be other scents in here. And again, if there's anything really cool, I'll put it in the box. Um, yeah, so this is just a bath bomb. I got two of them. I, I'm interested. <laughs> we'll see. Probably get to try at least one <laughs> unless I go crazy and I put them in my kids' packages. But yeah, my daughter hasn't been using bath bombs lately and my son has some in his room, including a couple I really like to have because they're Winnie and Walt um, and July Mac makes the best bath bombs hands down I've ever tried anywhere. And I do like me a good bath bomb. I appreciate the difficulty of making them. I don't make them very well. Um, she makes the best. There's just so much uh, volume. They're big. The color. Um, she's not the greatest on like blending scents or anything. I think she maybe uses fragrances she buys. Um, but um, man, the bath art from them. And they have like a like a creaminess like that. You really notice it in the tub for the, the duration of your bath. Um, so if you're, if you're in Canada or if, I think she probably ships internationally, or I know she ships to the States for sure. If you're in North America, 
um, you can probably order from her and maybe I'll put a link in the uh, uh, description uh, for Winston and Walter and you can see what bath bomb she has available now she is kind of like a smallish operation so she'll have like maybe a release and have certain things or have just a you know a limited subset and she changes from time to time but the the molds that she uses and the detail and the painting like she is an artist and they're phenomenal so i would say lush bath bombs i like them better than some other ones i've tried um but they're not winnie and walt winnie and walt is hands down the best my son has a couple in his room so uh if he's not not if he's hoarding winnie and walt bath bombs he's not getting this one <laughs> I'll trade with him if he wants to do a trade. Although I do think the scents he has were ones that I, I knew I wasn't crazy about when I ordered them. I think they were ordered for him. Um, speaking of scents, this is Lords of Misrule. Um, last time I did get one of these, and I think I said the um, shop clerk at the Lush um, recommended it to me because I said I like patchouli. Um, she said, I think, lime and patchouli. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. It's not what it says anywhere else. Um, it's, I think, black pepper, uh, vanilla root, and patchouli. It's a great smell. I have to tell you, this smell is a home run. And Lush knows it, and they have a whole series of stuff with this smell, including um, room spray and, yeah, other things that you can buy with this scent. Um, I used, this was the first bath bomb I used for my last haul. I may have to hoard this one for a little while. Yeah, I like this smell. Yeah, I like this smell. So this, so oh, here, so here's the thing. This is a really good bath bomb. I love the smell and it's a, it's a, an aromatherapy, like it's a sensory experience, right? Um, yeah, they're not as creamy and voluptuous as, as, uh, Winnie and Waltz, but she doesn't do this smell. And she maybe has different ingredients than, you know, it's not the same formulation. So, you know, I like both. I like a world where there's both. And I'm looking forward to using this one. <laughs> this one here, pretty sure is an orangey one. I'm smelling through the package. Actually, I'm intrigued. I'm smelling through the package and I'm not sure what I'm smelling. Let's see here. This one's called Bonfire. Oh. I'm getting like almost like cloves, like something sharper smelling. Let's see what it says. Oh, yeah, it does have cloves. Um, orange, bitter almond, cloves. Definitely can smell the cloves. So I guess bonfire, I guess they were going for like a, like an autumnal, like a Guy Fox night for or something. And this one, by the way, when they're wrapped in these little muslin cloths or whatever these are called, um, I've made this mistake before. Do not unwrap it. You can if you want to. It's not against the law. But if you unwrap it, you have to realize that there's probably botanicals inside here, like little flower petals and pieces of stuff, you know. And that's all going to be floating around in your bath, sister. And you're going to have a big mess to clean up after. And if that doesn't phase you and you like having a bath and getting leaves in your hair and stuff, by all means, unwrap it. If, on the other hand, you're like me, and life is busy enough and who needs to clean the tub and need to rinse after your bath, then just leave it in the thing. And uh, at the end, you'll be able to report back what was inside because you'll just have a little flattened bag that has whatever inside. And you can just throw it out. So that's my tip. So that one's called Bonfire and also smells really good. So I'm more excited, I think, about the Lords of Misrule and the Bonfire than I am about the other ones. But the other ones, you know, I may need a couple of kid gifts and stuff. I have, We have a really good friend whose birthday is around Halloween. Um, so he usually gets some sort of gift thing from me that is a little bit seasonal. So maybe one of those will be his or two. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave the soaps for last, I think. And I'm going to do the... Um, bubble bars. So I couldn't resist the labyrinth bubble bar. I did. Here's why I couldn't resist it. It's the same damn smell. Okay. So you're going to put this under the, the tap and hold on to it or whatever. And it's just going to make a copious amount of bubbles 
maybe you're going to have enough and then put this aside. I don't know how many baths this is supposed to do. I have had them before. Their milk bath one, I think, lasted me half a dozen baths. Really happy with it. It was like having a bottle of bubble bath with no packaging, you know, and terrific bubbles, like better than bubble bath bubbles. Um, so just longer lasting. And, and again, they had more feel to them. Um, yeah, nice creamy bubbles. So um, bubble, ba uh, bubble bars done right. And I have had them done wrong um, by uh, different companies here in Ottawa that I've tried them from. Um, but these are terrific. So I'm looking forward of having a, a, a Lords of Misrule bath bomb bath and a Lords of Misrule bubble bar bath in the future. Um, I did hear other YouTubers saying that the design was, you know, that was kind of, they were apathetic about it. Uh, not that fancy. I don't care. <laughs> if I want beautiful art, I know lots of other makers. By the way, please hit me up in comments because I am looking for other makers um, to maybe make, a, I, I'm not rich right now, but maybe make a little purchase and get the things and do an unboxing or product review or just share, you know, what it looks like. Here it is. I tried it. I'd love to try some other makers soaps. Um, not large amounts, just small orders, because obviously, as I mentioned, there's a lot of soap here, but also bath bombs, bubble bars, um, shampoos, shampoo and conditioner bars. Um, I'm up for trying cosmetics, although I would like somebody, I'd like somebody to do my face for me and then tell me what colors and stuff before I try it on my own. Um, but yeah, hit me up in the comments about what you'd like to see, and we'll try to uh, bring that kind of content to you while I'm still on a, on a hiatus from making much myself. So, yeah, the bubble bars. So I was looking at ordering this, like they had a huge one, like it's like a one kilogram bubble bar and it was Snow Fairy Scent, which is a cotton candy smell. I do like Snow Fairy, but I was like, I think I would get tired of it. So instead of ordering that huge one, which is obviously a value priced compared to ordering a bunch to get one kilograms worth of different kinds. So I didn't order it. Nevertheless, I didn't order it because I was like, I'm going to get tired of the smell. I, I ordered a couple of these. This one's called the Comforter and it's kind of like a sweet kind of black currenty smell. Yeah, it's, it smells like blackberries or hold on, let me see. Uh, it's bergamot black currant. Ooh, I'm good. Black currant. Uh, yeah, bergamot black currant. It's, uh, I don't know. They mentioned limonate, limonene a lot and I'll have to look and see if that's uh, something they're using. It's a, if it's, if it's a scent, a scent root booster, it has some other active ingredient role or if it's a colorant, I'm going to have to look that one up. But I love the smell of this and I was really looking forward to it. And I was like, I'm going to use that up so fast. So I got two. So I have 400 grams of the comforter instead of instead of a kilogram of snow fairy. So I just I didn't think I wanted to smell like cotton candy that much. I like the snow fairy cream and I might actually go buy a bigger one because I hear that it's a limited time product. And I would like to um, have have it a little longer after my very small pot is gone through, which seems to be happening fast. And they did send me a couple of samples. One of them was a little tiny snow fairy cream. So now I have a little purse size snow fairy body lotion. And I've, I've been smelling so many things. I need to smell some coffee. Coffee's supposed to clear your, your uh, sinuses. Clear. I don't know if it works. Maybe I'll drink some. Oh, I need to reheat that. I'm bad at drinking coffee and making videos. Yeah. Yeah, it does have the snow fairy smell. Yeah, that worked. Wow. Um, it definitely does have the snow fairy smell. Okay, last ones. Oh boy, this video is getting really long. Um, I also would love to know, uh, I think some people like long videos. I do think in general, as a new YouTuber, making long videos is probably a terrible idea, but... I love long videos. I love hanging out. Like if I like the the person, I want to hang out with them for a while. Uh, I think of Rachel Maxey, uh, Caitlin Doherty, um, 
you know, and, and, and granted they're making more exciting videos than me. Uh, um, Katie from Royalty Soaps. I mean, they're, they're, they're easy people to spend time with, right? And I don't mind if they make a, a longish video. I will watch that and I will chill. <laughs> but let me know what you think about that. I, I have a good friend who, um, she actually, I'd love to do like a, an interview series or meet the person or see their home or whatever. She has a terrific home. It's gorgeous. Um, I'm not sure how she feels about social media though. So she probably wouldn't agree, but I'd love to go in her home and kind of just look around her home. And she has, she has like, like for a video. I mean, I can do that as a friend, but like film it. And she, she has like stacks of books, like she artfully piles stacks of books. And the thing about her is she's really intellectual and, and multilingual and, you know, cultured and she's read them all. So I would say like, Hey, <laughs> what's your favorite kind of book right now? And she'd say, you know what kind of book I'm really into? We'd actually had this conversation. She said, Faith, this is a funny thing to say, but my favorite kind of book is a big book. I love a big book. So maybe you're a person like me or Marjana that you like a big book and like to get lost in that world. Or maybe you're a person that only likes to read like BuzzFeed articles. I don't know. You know, hit me up in the comments and let me know. And maybe too, is that an age thing? Is there an age group for that? I tend to think that that's a little bit too much pigeonholing people. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe percentage wise, it makes sense to think that way. Um, yeah, just let me know. Let me know. I'm, I'm interested. These things interest me. Okay, my soaps. So I got a few. This one's called Baked Alaska, I think. What's it say? It does. It says Baked Alaska. It just says lather up, then rinse clean, made in Canada. That's all that it says. Everything here says made in Canada because it probably would have been made in Toronto. Um, yeah, I always see this one. So this is one of those ones where they give you a, a chunk or a slab. They call it a chunk, a slab. Uh, they call it bulk soap, soap bulk. So... Okay. Okay. This has some of the smells I've already smelled, but it also has like a, like a jasmine or a honeysuckle. Like it has a gardenia, like it has some kind of nice floral that I, oh my God, geranium maybe. It has a floral that I really like. And, and I've seen chunks of this at the store where it, there's almost like inclusions in it, like, um, like embeds that, or, or, it's maybe they pour, you know, see, this looks like an embed. So you can see that. Yeah, there's embeds and they're like, I think they're red, blue, yellow, maybe orange, you know, so very colorful, fun soap. And I like the top. I tried to do a top soap with the top like this once. And uh, I think the bottom, maybe because of heat being trapped in or something, the top cracked. So this is a technique I have not mastered yet. And this is a pretty, pretty soap. I like it and I'm excited to use it. And it does not say on here anything that's in it. So you can check the box and see if I see if I found out what's what that smell is. But I really they, this one actually had a little bit of, you know, they say plastic free packaging, but I'm pretty sure that's not bioplastic. That's fully plastic, my friend. That was plastic that was wrapped in. For whatever reason. They felt the need to put some plastic around that one. They did have paper over top. Um, okay, on to the next one. Oh, this one I think I had a sample. They one day asked me what I wanted for a sample and I got it and I was like, oh, I like this one. It's creamy and soft and I kind of used it up and maybe even preferred it over a couple of my soaps that I had on the go at the time. Um, so I did get, it's the rhubarb and custard. And I like the smell and I haven't opened this one at all. So I have to... This makes me sad. I hate ripping up the package. And again, it won't say anything on here. Rhubarb and custard. Oh, it does. It has the ingredients. Uh, rhubarb and custard, olive oil, fruit oil, soy milk. Soy milk. Ooh. Well, having an added of like a milk in there is definitely going to make the soap creamy and have a nicer lather. And as soon as you're adding like milk soaps, they just have a nice lather and softness. Again, with the plastic, huh? Ooh, ooh, this one's a bit tacky. I can kind of see why they look, look, look at this. 
it's peeling off. I can kind of see why they had that plastic wrap. I love that smell. That's that's more subtle. Almost like apples, I guess rhubarb, right? Oh my god. Oh, I really like that. Oh my god. I might have to use that today. I'm looking bergamot orange corn. That must be an additive. That's not for the scent. Um, castor oil in that one. Castor oil is a nice additive. It does up the lather. You can't use too much. I think 8% is the kind of the max or yeah. Um, I'm looking to see, they say the colors, there's sodium bicarbonate in this, which why? I don't know why. Interesting. Um, but it looks like, it looks like it's just supposed to be citrusy. I don't know what the Latin name of rhubarb is in here, but I don't see the word rhubarb in brackets. So I don't know why it's called rhubarb and custard. Oh, wait. Rheum rhubarbarium extract. I'm sure that's rhubarb. It's got coconut oil, uh, cocoa butter, cocoa, cocoa butter, cocoa seed butter. It's got propylene gly glycol, which um, I don't add to anything. Um, glycerin. Glycerin is naturally occurring in handmade soaps, but I mean, there's different ways you can write the ingredients. You can write the ingredients with what you put in to make it, or you can write the ingredients as the products of the chemical reaction. So maybe they're just writing their, ingre their ingredients a different way. I would never list glycerin as an ingredient in my soap because I'm not putting it in. That sounds to me like they're putting it in. I did like this soap. It has more ingredients than one of my soaps would have, but I'm going to try it again and enjoy it anyway. Soap you wash with it and then you, you know, you rinse it off. It's not like it's stay. It's not like a cosmetic that's staying on your body, um, like a moisturizer or face cream or something. So, you know, I think like people are worried about things like titanium dioxide, say, which is like a, it's a, it's a colorant for cosmetics that makes a nice white color. Um, yeah, maybe you should worry about that if some, if it's something you're leaving on and that's something you're concerned about. If it's in your soap, like... It's not going to be on your skin. Like, it's not like you're absorbing it. So I'm not really sure why people get upset about that. But um, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but I would say most doctors I know do not look at all the ingredients in their soap either because they go, meh, that's, uh, who has time, you know? Oh, I love that. I like, I like the smell. I do like it. Okay. The last thing. Again, can't open it. So what was this one? Oh, okay. I have to tell you a story. So there's another YouTuber I just started following, a young lady in Great Britain, and she worked at Lush at one point. And I, as far as I, I know, I've seen so far, I think all her content is about Lush, although I started following her on Instagram and she collects various things and she really likes Disney and a few things like that. But um, she was talking about, she used to work at Lush and she did not like the smell. It's karma. And then her mom started to use these products and then she started to associate the smell with her mom. So now she likes the smell of karma. I think I'd already ordered it or I'd looked and I was like, that is a soap I want to try. Um, and I kind of laughed because I'm probably her mom's age. I'm not her age. Anyhow, so this is karma. I'm going to try it. Okay. Okay, this is like, you know, when you go in those stores and they have like wind chimes and they sell different kinds of incense and they have, they're selling crystals and statuary and woven things and stuff. And you know, you know what I mean? And they have meditation and yoga and stuff in the back. This smells like that store, but in the really nicest way, just like all the cozy memories of being in a store like that and just feeling very cozy and welcome, you know. Oh my goodness. I want to go look through all their spiritual books. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love that smell. I love, love, love this smell. So I'm looking at the ingredients. That This is made with rapeseed oil, which I find interesting because that's not one I see 
listed very often as an ingredient. I've never used it myself. I'll be interested to see what this soap feels like. Uh, coconut oil, again, with the propylene glycol and the glycerin. Uh, Pogo Stum Cablin oil. I think that might be... Is that patchouli? I've seen that before. I don't know what that CNC name of. I know that one. And again, they're listing, they have orange peed, uh, seed oil, lavendula hybridia oil. Is that a fancy way of saying lavender? This does smell like a bit like patchouli or something to me, but like a really, it's an incense -y sort of smell. It's funny because I have lots of kinds of incense here, but I don't exactly have this one. I feel like it's orange and patchouli, but not quite something else. Orange and patchouli, I would know the smell right away because I'm always making stuff that's scented like that. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to look and see how Lush describes this smell, but I really like it. So yeah, so this is me, the soap maker with like not one, not two, but three Lush soaps that I'm going to try. <laughs> so yeah, I got to I got to take a picture of me doing this like There you go. That's my um cover photo for the video. I I think I think I like the smell of Karma the best, actually. I do like this smell, and I and I like the soap. I think this is a promising soap. I like the, I like, I mean, I like all of them. This one to me is like, it reminds me of like May in New Brunswick when I was a kid. I don't know, it's a floral. I really, I really like it. I didn't grow up my whole life in New Brunswick, by the way, just a couple years, but the very specific sort of flowery scent. Uh, maybe from small trees or something. Anyway, very nice, very nice. Um, okay, so that so that's it. I was gonna share um, the books, but I think I'll make a separate video because you've suffered enough, really. I have some other stuff I want to add to this, so this is definitely coming in at an hour. So, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so I can quit my day job. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I like my day job. But please like, comment, and subscribe. And keep choosing creativity over perfection and enjoy the process. Mwah. See you soon. Again, more apologies for the less than perfect condition of my face uh, during the main portion of today's video. Of course, I have the highest quality standards um, and I endeavor to never have anything uh, wrecking my beautiful skin um, so you can always see it very clearly and of course there would be no distractions. Um, so yes, we'll endeavor to uh, keep to the, stand the high standards which I have set for myself and keep my skin clear and beautiful with nothing at all distracting. Ah!